into my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron's Crypt. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, I use my 24 years of BDSM experience and 20 years working in the psychology field to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. On this episode of The Crypt, we're hitting the rules to love by. I have to share with you my new collar maker, daycollars.com. And then we're diving into an interesting topic presented to me by a crypter on the BDSM love languages. Rules to love by. Rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky. That's K-N-K-I and comes from the Kinky app available on all platforms. Not a sponsor, but it does stand for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. And rule number three, the quote from Mr. Paul Young, submission is not about authority and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. Daycollars.com is a place for personalized handmade collars, leashes, cuffs, and belts. They cater to everyone from sporty and informal daily fashion to the leather community. They will guide you through the styling of your accessories, and the whole thing concerning your order is personalized to your needs and specifications. For inspiration and ideas on your personal style or to simply admire their completed works, visit their gallery page at daycollars.com. Dr. Gary Chapman gives what most experts and layperson alike consider an excellent representation of the different ways you and I offer and receive acts of love in his appropriately titled book, The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate. Let's go through these and see how these also apply to the world of BDSM. As we do, make sure to keep in mind that you probably are a mix of these to some degree. Most people have a primary love language and a few secondary ones, but there are those that have an equal part of two or even all five of them. Also, consider that for a lot of people, the way that they show love and affection is also the way that they wish to receive it. So if you're a person that shows love by giving a lot of gifts, chances are you also feel it by receiving a lot of little gifts. The first one, words of affirmation. This love language is marked by the desire to hear words of encouragement, approval, and appreciation. For the BDSM world, while vanilla compliments completely apply here, saying good girl or good boy is also important, but some of the things that people often don't think about are those less vanilla things. Basically, I'm talking about humiliation and degradation here. We are involved in this lifestyle because we accept and embrace all of our needs, and for some, a big part of this is being told how bad we are. You know that I work hard to keep this pretty PG-13 despite the topic, so I won't go into obvious examples. However, with this, it is detrimental that people that have this as a primary love language and the need for degradation and humiliation to have all of these met in order to feel loved. Just don't forget the importance of aftercare, which could be said about all of these. The second one is quality time. This love language is marked by the desire to actively spend time with our significant other, having meaningful conversations, or sharing recreational activities. At first glance, this is possibly the easiest one of the five to provide, but examining it further, we cannot just brush off the word quality. There have been several times when Mayfair and I have set up dates and times to get together for a scene. I mean, it doesn't get any more quality than that, right? But then things went wrong. Illness, work, overtime, the mood wasn't right, family emergencies, hundreds of reasons why things haven't always worked out. Is this considered quality time? Some of it, yes. The planning time we spent together, not on the phone and especially not when texting, but most of it, no. Now, I don't say that for the times that we were actually able to get together and things like mood got in the way. I'm referring to when we were completely unable to meet up. Just because a scene was unsuccessful 
doesn't mean that it was a failure or that the time spent together wasn't quality. Just like judging the quality of a scene by the pretties (laughs) it leaves, this is a huge mistake. So is judging a scene that ends earlier than planned. Next, receiving gifts. This love language is marked by the desire to receive gifts regardless of whether they are expensive commercial gifts or heartfelt homemade gifts. Like the others, this one is pretty self-explanatory, but with us kinky folk, one might also include the gift of a pretty, a bite, an additional play partner for the evening, or any number of wildly creative things that you could conjure from the depths of your imagination. Yes, some of these things might also cross over into the other four categories, and we have to be careful to not let them cross over too much, or we aren't speaking the right language. But if it is something that they, not you, would consider a gift, then it would count. On a personal note, This is one of the ones I greatly struggle with as the receiver. Though I am appreciative for gifts, I would much rather be the person giving than the one receiving. Moving into acts of service, this love language is marked by the desire to have someone do something such as dishwashing, dog walking, and laundry for you. Ah, the things that a lot of people think of in the world of BDSM when they hear the word service is someone cleaning their house for them or doing the laundry. And yes, these are absolutely acts of service, but so is sex, boot blacking, and other forms of leather care like cleaning floggers and toys, um, dropping off a meal to you at work, carrying a stack of your business cards just in case you run out, cleaning the dungeon equipment after you have played with them or someone else. In this world, service can and often is servicing. In Elizabeth Kramer's book, Dom's Guide to Submissive Training, she talks about the importance of oral sex being administered daily. This is way more about the act of service than it is about the sexual act. Just because someone walks like a duck and quacks like a duck We assume it's a duck, but sometimes it's something completely different. If you think back to a comparison Master Arcane made between Alice in the real world and Alice through the looking glass, you will easily understand what I'm talking about. And that link is in the show notes, but it's cauldronscript.com slash 114. Finally, we get into physical touch. This love language is marked by the desire to be touched, whether it is holding hands, hugging, kissing, a stroking of the skin, or sex. In my experience, service and this one seem to be the most common amongst the kink community, but do not let that sway your own thoughts, feelings, and most importantly, your needs. Sadly, it is also one of the most misused and abused forms of love there is. And here is why. With the popularity of kink becoming so prevalent within the popular American culture, people feel the need to be the stereotypes they read about. Thus, we have a new generation of young and old alike that feel that they have to be Master Domly Dom, stoic butthead to be dominant. Any meaning and loving touches go straight out the window. All passionate... Little caresses or hair strokes disappear into the guise of the role that they feel they have to play. This is far, far from the truth. You know me, and in that, you know that I constantly advocate for two primary things, communication and aftercare. The thing here, though, is that while touching, cuddling, kissing, or sex might be a necessity for someone's aftercare, That does not count as their required physical touch to feel love. No, I'm sorry. No. That is their required touch to feel safe. Let me repeat that. Anything done in aftercare, whether it is physical touch, gift giving, affirmations, time, acts of service, do not in any way ever count towards some imaginary credit to speaking someone else's love language. 
These are things done to make them feel safe. What does count is that random hug, kiss, hair stroke, shoulder rub, or sexual act. So I know this went fairly quick. I'm not finished yet, but I do want to recap these really quick. Words of affirmation, which is words of encouragement, approval, and appreciation. Quality time, which is actively spending time with our significant other, having meaningful conversations, or sharing recreational activities. Gift receiving, which is receiving gifts, whether they are big, huge commercial gifts or heartfelt little handmade gifts. Acts of service, such as dishwashing, dog walking, laundry, things of this nature. And then physical touch, which is holding hands, hugging, kissing, stroking the skin or the hair, and of course, sexual acts. So, Master Cauldron... Where in this do you fall? Well, I put a link in the show notes for a test that I took, and I've taken this test many, many times throughout the years, and I was well aware of what my primary love language was before I ever knew that there was a book or a test about this. And there's several online tests that you can take. Some of them are free. Some you have to sign up for a mailing list. I put a link in the show notes to one that is free and you do not have to sign up for a mailing list. But what was my response to it? You respond to physical touch. And now I'm going to just read what they said about this. For you, love is as simple as a caress. Wherever it happens, however long it lasts or how it is, it could be just holding hands while walking about having a quick cuddle once the kids are in bed, stealing a kiss here and there, exchanging touches while passing each other in the hallway, and of course, making love, particularly in the warming up phase. Body to body, skin against skin. Physical touch is security and reassurance for you and makes you sure that your partner loves you. On the contrary, absence of physical contact hurts you deeply and you can feel ill-treated or rejected, and you close down emotionally. But when your partner communicates in your love language, it touches you deep inside, creating strong emotional intimacy that opens you to yourself and to your partner. Some advice. Every person has his or her own geography when it comes to bodily touch. Don't think that touching them in a way that pleases you will necessarily please them and vice versa. It's important to verbally confirm the touches and caresses that you like. You know I love it when you hold my hand. I like it when you brush against me while passing by. Or I adore when you take me in your arms. You can invent a couple of games to make your partner guess which style of caress you like and which zones of your body are more receptive, getting hotter, getting colder. If you are seriously lacking contact, begin by explaining to your partner how you operate in sensorial terms and perhaps invite them to find five different ways of physical contact during the day. So that was the explanation and the breakdown with a little bit of advice there at the end that they gave me on this website when I took the test. So the thing that is most important to take away from this is that we need to be aware of our own love language and the love language of the people we're in relationships with, whether that be family, friends, or lovers. By becoming aware and actively engaging each other in the way that they prefer we will all live a happier, healthier, and less stressed life. I tried for years to talk my preferred love language of touch to people that spoke in terms of other love languages, and no one in those relationships were happy. And all of us felt misunderstood, and honestly, quite often, we all felt rejected. And I'm sure rejection in a scene might feel nice to some, but to live that way on a daily basis will create depression and, worst of all, resentment. Besides, if you're going to have a relationship of love and respect, then you have to tell them in the way that they understand that you love them. And from that, they will also know that you respect them. 
At least that's one piece of that particular puzzle. And that's going to wrap this one up. Show notes for this one can be found at coldernscript.com slash 215. Of course, there's a link in the show notes. Thank you to the show producers, pro producer at $100 a month. She would like to remain anonymous. Executive producers at $25 a month. Jeremiah, Jess, Arcane, DGR, and Violet Aurelia, Feline Rouge, and Baby Love 2269. Senior producers, $10 a month. Matt, Emerald Wolf, JK, Queen Sage, and Sword Out the Kinks. Producers at $5 a month. Kane Sin, That Place in Oklahoma City. Thank you, Miter. Roxy Bear. Thank you, Roxy. Olive Eyes, Zion, and Alexandria. Junior producers at $1 a month. K2SO, Buffalo Dom 84, Lay Sumi, and Haley. If you would like to become one of our show producers, go to the website, coldrescript.com slash support. Of course, there's a link in the show notes. It greatly helps me maintain the bills for the podcast. And I'm extremely grateful. We also do online munches once a month there. And I put out weekly episodes for the Patreon producers, which are my play journals. So you can get the back catalog of those if you sign up at patreon.com and donate to the show. BDSMcontracts.org, who I'm partnered with for DomCon this year. I'll be giving away some of their contracts there, some of my t-shirts, a few other little things. But you can find them at bdsmcontracts.org they have some really beautiful 25 page soft and hardbound msds contracts owner property i think there's like six different ones now that they have for 20 percent off use coupon code cauldron20 that's k-u-l-d-r-i-n-2-0 no space there and of course whippingstripes.com my personal maker of all things leather and paracord impact toy thank you so much Next time on The Crypt, I don't know what we're going to be talking about. Um, Every time I've had an idea, one of you have reached out and said, hey, what about this topic? And it's been so good, I couldn't pass it up. All of my contact info is in the show notes. Again, that's Cauldron's Crypt. This has been Master Cauldron for cauldronscrypt.com. Unearth the truth.